You can't see up the full tree. Well, people are just going to have to deal with that. Okay. You can't get everything you want at Christmas, can you? But I'm the star on top of the tree. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon at Savage Reads and today I'm joined by Pip on the 14th day of Vlogmas where we're doing Crime Time Part 2. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's better. Is it? Yeah, part How many two. parts will there be? We can't who say. Who knows, who knows? In the last video, we got you to choose a book that we should read for the next video. It's been a lot longer than we meant it to be. Yeah. I've been ill. Pip was ill. Then she went to Berlin. Yeah. But we're back now. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about the book that we read, which was... Black Eyed Susans by Julia Heblin. But we're going to talk about that at the end because if you've not read it and if you don't want to have any spoilers, we're going to not spoil it anyway, but just yeah. in case, we thought we'd save that to the end. And then uh, what we'll do before that is talk about some crime books we've read since, both of us, and then also the next book that we're going to read together that you can all join in with, which Pip has chosen. Yay. So if I hate it, I can blame Pip. Fair so enough. there we go. So Pip. Yes. What have you read since we last met? Okay, so I've picked three books that I've read and between them. Um, <laughs> between them? I'm just going to go down and get my book. Oh, this is the one she's currently reading. Yeah, so this one I'm actually not finished. I've got one chapter left on this, which I would never normally leave one chapter. But I was on the train and I was coming, going to work and it, my stop was next. Just get an early night tonight, Pip. Just ignore me and Chris and go to bed oh, with yeah, the book. Oh yeah, what I was planning on doing. Once this is done, I'm off. Anyway. So this is the book that I've almost finished. So it's The Beautiful Dead by Belinda Bauer. On the front it says, he might kill her, she might let him. Ooh. Yep. Shall I read a little bit of the back? Well, or just tell us what, what you've read so far. Yeah, so it's basically about um, a girl who works... Oh my God, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> I've forgotten it. <laughs> she is a reporter. Are you going to look? <laughs> just holding it up. <laughs> She's a reporter and she works for the local news channel. Um, but basically... Is she called Eve? She is called <laughs> Eve, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and yet she, there's a, a serial killer that they are tracking and trying to track down, but he takes a bit of an obsession to Eve, oh. the reporter. But the reason I liked the book so much was because literally from the very first chapter, it was just, it, it gripped me in. That's something I yeah. think is quite important with a crime novel. I want to be in it from the beginning. Yeah, definitely. Like, I remember Susan Hill's one of my favourite authors and I read The Various Haunts of Men. Nothing happened for 100 pages, nobody died, nothing criminally yeah, happened. No. <laughs> nothing crimey. It's not a word. Something it's like that. Alright, then keep it. But yeah, but nothing happened, it really, really wound me up. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so, so that's straight in. Straight in, first chapter. Oh, I was about to say something, then that'll completely spoil it, so I'm not going to say that. Well, not if it's in the first chapter, because people oh, might know. From well, the yeah, it doesn't really spoil it, but straight in, first chapter, someone's dead. First chapter. That's gone. what you need in yeah. a crime novel, I think. And so straight away, I was like, yep, yeah, this is for me. I've not read this, but I have read her book, Blacklands, which okay. is about a 12-year-old boy who wants to find... It's either who tried to murder him or who tried to, or who murdered his parents. Small difference there, but it was years ago that I read it. <laughs> and then he starts writing to the murderer, and the murderer starts taking a real interest in him, and it's really creepy. Yeah. Really creepy. Yeah, like just really good writing, like, constantly things going on. There's never been a point in the book where I've been really bored or just thought, oh, should I just stop reading it? I've still got one more chapter to go, and there's still more to find out, so... This isn't Pip's edition, because it's pristine. It this is. is my edition. Oh. No, it's not. It's oh. literally up my <laughs> The first book that I'm going to talk to you all about, which I don't think I've mentioned on this channel yet, is Six Stories by, I'm going to murder this surname, oh. Matt Weselowski. And mm. it's, if you liked the um, podcast serial, you'll love this, because the book is a podcast, and okay. it's about a guy who goes around trying to solve cold cases or murders that have gone forgotten or just not been solved and all those kind of things. And he goes back and starts investigating this one particular case which happens in Yorkshire. So it's Northern Britain, which of course I instantly loved. And honestly, I didn't think a podcast would work in a book. Honestly, I was proper gripped. Did you watch, did you read Serial? No. Did you watch Serial? It's a podcast, you can't watch yeah, you it. Can't watch you it. can't watch it. But I didn't do that either. Did you not? No. Oh, you'd love it. I'd love to. Oh, you'd have to listen to it at work. Yeah. We'll never hear from you again. I um, have actual work to do them. We all do, but sometimes we do it with headphones on. What I love about crime novels is also when they give away that nice little bit on the beginning. Yeah, which you just need up. that one little... Yeah. One few, body, few six lines. stories, which one is true. Yeah. And it's really, really good. So that would be a highly recommended from me. Okay. Pip, your next one. My next one is... This has got some similarities to the Belinda Bauer. Because uh, it's got yeah, that yeah. psychopath who's obsessed with the main yes. protagonist. So this one is Daisy and Chains by Sharon Bolton. She's one of um, my favourite crime writers. 
guys. Well, do you know what? This is actually the first Sharon Bolton book that I've read. Um, again, it was obviously one that Simon gave me because... You mean I've not inflicted the one on you that has a character in it called Simon Savage <gasps> that is spelled my way? Have I really not? That's not why she's my favourite crime writer, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, back to me. Um... <laughs> So Daisy and Chains. So yeah, so this is about a um, serial killer who is already convicted. He's in jail. And it's about a reporter. Sorry, not. She's not a reporter. I'm totally lying. It's about... Eve Singer's a reporter. <laughs> she is a lawyer and she usually picks cases um, of people that have already been convicted and she tries to get them released basically because she thinks... Well, not necessarily because she thinks that they're innocent, but I think she just likes the challenge. But, yeah, this one, it's got a massive twist at the end if you've not read it. Um, and I didn't I thought guess... you were going to say, if you've not read it, and it's this. <laughs> I did not guess this twist at all. I really enjoyed it. Again, this one, there isn't, there's not as much happening as in the previous book that I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the Beautiful Dead by Belinda Bauer. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, do, I promise I read them, like I actually do, but I just get the words. can't remember them. words. <laughs> Once I've read the book, gone. Who am I? Gone. I'm not quite sure. Why am I, who am I? Where am I? So, although it, the, it's not as kind of constant as um, with The Beautiful Dead, it, um, it, it still gripped me. And then obviously there's the massive twist at the end, which I was like, go. Oh. You're like, what? No. What? One more time for everyone. No. Brilliant. The second crime book I want to mention to you guys is one that I was recommended by Michael Kindness, who used to be one of the co-hosts of Books on the Night Stand, which is one of my favourite podcasts. He's a lovely man and he recommends really good books. And it's Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Now, I didn't realise until I bought the book Kristen Ritter was. Ooh. And she is Jessica Jones. Oh. And also, is it the bitch in the apartment below or something that she's in? She's in Breaking Bad, which I've never really watched. I was just about really, to say, really she's watched. in Breaking Bad. Don't yeah. trust the bitch in apartment 23. That's, that's what it. I recognise her from Breaking so, Oh, I've got itch, no, sorry. Um, I've still got a cold. <laughs> Don't um, know about it. <laughs> oh, everyone knows about it. But and that instantly made me do a bit of a, oh, really? Is that going to actually be any good? It's mm. been written by a subject. It's brilliant. It's about Abby, and Abby is a lawyer. It's obviously a theme going on with what we're reading. Love lawyers. Abby is a lawyer, and she is looking into a case that is set in her hometown where they think people might have been poisoning the water or putting chemical in the water that's been leading people mm. to die. But it also goes back to her childhood and when a girl who was more of a friend of me than anything, a bit like Precious to me, mm. who vanished and went missing. So the two mysteries kind of collide. So the only way I can describe it is like Erin Brockovich okay. meets like a really nasty, twisty thriller. And it is, it's so twisty, you can't always keep up with it. But you can, if that makes sense. So you can't second guess it, that's what I want to say. You can keep up with it, but you can't second guess it. And I absolutely loved it. I like, properly loved it. Sounds good. Um, I would really, really, really recommend it. Um, it's probably one of my favourite thrillers that I've read this year. Pip! I've got one more book and I've let's see no whether more. I can remember <laughs> anything about this book. Here's ah. open. Yeah, so my final book that I'm talking about is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pimbra. Oh, I said that right. That is right, but mine is. Oh, that is dusty. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, that, this is not my copy. Mine would be pristine. <laughs> sorry. Um, again, this one is full of twists and turns. This one is like, it's a bit weird. It's a bit of a psychological thriller, to be honest. More than, well, it's still crime, but it's, mm. it, it's like a crime mixed with psychological thriller, I'd say. But again, this one has got a massive twist at the end, which it builds so well throughout the book. Like, you, there's so much tension for you, read, like, wanting to find out what this twist is. And again, I even more so than Daisy and Chains, I did not guess the end of this book at all. It's a bit, it was a bit weird, but in a good way. I kind of finished it and was like, ooh. But, it's like what? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> we'll I'm just going to do book reviews with, with reactions. <laughs> ooh. Basically, Louise is a single mum. It starts off with her on a night out and she meets this guy. And then she goes into a job on Monday and she's got a new boss. And her new boss is the guy that she hooked up with. Oh. But it turns out he's also married. Oh. Yeah. And um, so that kind of starts it off all a bit like, hmm, what's going to happen here? Um, and then she becomes really pally with his wife, Adele. But she obviously doesn't let Adele know what has happened between her and her husband. So that's kind of an underlying secret throughout. Or is it a secret? Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, you've given away too much, okay. Pippa. You must stop. Sorry. So those are the books that we've read that are crimey that we thought we'd talk about. Um, before we talk about what we're going to read next. So that if you want to join in with us, we'll probably do the next one end of January-ish, I think. Yeah. Um, what is it, Pip? 
Ta -da. And it is. There we go. I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. Yeah. Pip, read us the blurb. I shall. Okay. A tragic accident. It all happened so quickly. She couldn't have prevented it. Could she? Oh. In a split second, Jenna Gray's words are sent into a nightmare. Her only hope of moving on is to walk away from everything she knows to start afresh. Des desperate to escape, Jenna moves to a remote cottage on the Welsh coast, but she is haunted by her fears, her grief and her memories of a cruel November night that changed her life forever. Slowly, Jenna begins to glimpse the potential for happiness in her future, but her past is about to catch up with her and the consequences will be devastating. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Claire McIntosh is an author that I've meant to read for ages. I think she used to be a policewoman. So I think that's going to be quite okay, interesting yeah. to see how she kind From of her, gives... The crime sides of it will be like really accurate yeah. because she knows exactly what goes on. But these are supposed to be real... She's supposed to write real psychological thrillers that genuinely make you have a <gasps> moment. And this one apparently has one massive... But then actually I shouldn't say that, should I? Because as soon as you know there's going to be one massive <gasps> moment, you're, you're always looking for it. for it. Yeah, and you're always thinking about what it could possibly be. So what we're saying is I've ruined it for everyone already. Basically. Oh. But let's just do it anyway. Yeah. Now we can talk about what we did read, or at least what one of us read to fruition. And believe it or not, for once, it, it was, was me Pip. that read it and not Simon. Well, no, I did read it, well. but I didn't finish it. Um, it's, and we'll explain why. It's Black Eyed Susans by Julia Herblin, which one of the reasons that I chose this was because my mother, who's got a lot to answer for, she really, really loved it. Now, it's about a woman called Tessa, who you flip between the present, where she is Tessa, looking back as Tessie, as a young girl. There was a murderer, he killed a lot of young women, he buried them all together, including her, but she wasn't actually dead because she's got an unusually slow heart rate, yeah. which I had a little bit of an issue with anyway. What's happening now is people are planting, or somebody is planting, Black Eyed Susans in her garden, and maybe the guy who's up for murder on death row didn't really do it. So that is the premise. Pip. Yes. How did you get on with it? Because I really struggled. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I did actually really, really struggle with it as well. But as I said, I think in the last Crime Time video, I just cannot, I hate not reading a book if I start reading it. So I really, really battled through. It took me much longer than it would normally take to read a, a book, but I did get to the end. I did enjoy it. I wouldn't say it was the you worst You said it book was a I've good twist. Read. Yeah, I think that the twist was good we at the end. You won't get that way, by the way. Um, they passed all it what it is, though. Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was still a, a slight shock, the twist, but it didn't kind of fill me with... Great excitement. It's a tricky one because when I was reading it, I was really struggling because it just felt really slow. I don't understand why, because the chapters are really short. Yeah, they are, yeah. You flip from perspective of Tessa to Tessie, which is mm. kind of interesting because you'll so find it out. Bit, yeah, it? well, you're trying to work out who's done it then mm. and then who's done it now. And, but I just, I think my problem was I just didn't care. So for me, the probably the two issues were Tessa is quite distanced and she's denying stuff from herself. Mm. So you as a reader are being distanced from the narrator by the narrator. Yeah. That's quite hard to get into. But also I think it is the fact that because Julie is holding on to these secrets, which every crime novel is based around the big, if it's not a who done it, it's a why done it. Um, and I felt like there was almost not enough substance to, the, to what would potentially be the big twist to justify the amount of time it was taking me to get, to get through there, it. Yeah. Which probably makes, it does sound like I've been lazy, but I wasn't, because I really did try with it, but it was one of those books where I suddenly realised like, I kind of left it on the dining room table rather than put it in my bag. Yeah, you're and, not constantly wanting to pick it all. But I know loads of people who loved it. Yeah. But I think it's like you were saying earlier, I need a book that from the beginning, yeah. I am compelled and propelled through. I'm compelled by and propelled <laughs> through. There we go, that's what I mean. That's the one. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm exactly the same. Obviously I did finish it, but... All right, if you keep mentioning that, we're going to fall <laughs> out. Are you glad you read it? Oh, definitely, yeah. I'm glad I read it. As I said, I don't think it's, it's not like the worst book I've ever read by any means, but it's just not one of my favourites either. So we're never letting you guys pick our choices ever again. Bad That's basically, choice. yeah, bad choice. No, we no, will. It wasn't, it wasn't. But um, Pip's going to choose the next one. I'll choose the one after that, and then we'll let you guys choose out of four for the uh, episode after that. So that's it really, that's crime time, that's the latest crime time. We hope you enjoyed it. Did you have a criminally good time? Oh, criminally good. Dear, yeah, that didn't work, did it? No. Well, that's not gonna be our catchphrase, no. ever. No, no. Ever. Let's not even speak of it again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let us know what you thought about Black Eyed Seasons. We'll both comment in the comments below, Yeah. we promise. Join us for 
this book, I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. We'll be reading this and filming in the end of January, beginning of February. So hopefully you'll join with us then and let us yes. know of any other good crime books that we should be reading. Definitely. But until next time, we'll speak to you soon and I'll see you tomorrow. Mm. Bye. Bye.